Hello guys, my name is Nash. Welcome back to my channel. It is a Thursday, but it's not going to be Tales of Terror because I'm not going to be talking about the usual crime story or it is not a crime story yet. Um, I'm going to be talking about this very recent case and if you watch the news, you would be very much aware of one of China's most well-known tennis athletes, Peng Shuai. It may not be a crime story yet, but I feel it is something worth investigating because of the suspicions and the allegations about her disappearance. Note that this is a story that is still very recent and it is still developing. So here's a little summary about what actually happened before I dive into the story. So on the night of November 2nd, 2021, 35-year-old Peng Shuai made a very lengthy post on her Weibo account, a leading Chinese social media platform. The tennis player and former world doubles number one alleged that she had been forced into sex despite repeated refusals. Peng Shuai, who has some 574,000 followers on her Weibo account, had directed her post to the 75-year-old Zhang Gaoli, who is a retired Chinese politician. He served as the senior vice premier of the People's Republic of China between 2013 and 2018 and was a member of the Chinese Communist Party Politburo Standing Committee, China's highest ruling council between 2012 and 2017. You can see how much of a power he holds in China with his former positions. Despite the a huge age gap difference of 40 years, that didn't stop the two from having a relationship although it was on and off. Zhang Gaoli is in fact married to his wife Kang Tie with a son and an adopted daughter. Now the post that Peng Shuai posted on the 2nd of November was removed within 20 minutes on her Weibo account and Peng Shuai hasn't posted on social media or been seen in public since in which the public became really concerned about her well-being. In her Weibo post, Peng Shuai addressed an incident that happened three years ago after Peng Shuai had finished her game in Beijing. She claimed that the alleged assault happened while someone stood guard outside the bedroom door. I was so scared that afternoon, I never gave consent crying the entire time. So what was written on her Weibo and what is the relationship between the two? Her Weibo's post is pretty long so I'm not going to take everything but maybe just the important parts. So in the 1500 character post, Peng Shuai gave a detailed account of her encounters with Zhang Gao Li which began a decade ago. According to what she wrote, about 3 years ago after Zhang Gao Li had retired, Zhang Gao Li had asked Dr. Liu at the Tianjin Tennis Center to contact Peng Shuai on his behalf to ask Peng Shuai if she could play tennis with him at Kangming Hotel situated in Beijing. After they had finished playing their game of tennis, Zhang Gao Li and his wife Kang Tie brought Peng Shuai to their home in which afterwards Zhang Gao Li would bring Peng Shuai into his room. This statement is taken from her Weibo. Like what happened 10 years ago in Tianjin, you wanted to have sex with me. Now with this statement, I'm not very sure if something did happen 10 years ago as she didn't go into detail about what really exactly happened back then. Perhaps one of the more disturbing parts to this post was when Peng Shuai claimed that the someone that was standing guard outside the door was revealed to be none other than Zhang Gao Li's wife Kang Jie. So at this point, I can safely assume that Kang Jie is fully aware of her husband's love affair. According to Peng Shuai, she and Zhang Gao Li had sex about 7 years ago and it seemed consensual for both sides but later on after Zhang Gao Li was promoted to be a member of the Politburo Standing Committee in Beijing, he never contacted her again. She buried every deep inside her without telling anyone, not even her mother as Zhang Gao Li had wanted to keep their relationship a secret. But it's also very clear that what Peng Shuai might have needed was answers that she could only get from the man himself. So this statement is from her, I had buried it all inside me. After all, if you didn't want to take any responsibility, why did you come back for me and brought me to your home to have sex? Now Peng Shuai also wrote that Zhang Gao Li was not entirely a bad person. Initially, he still treated her well. He would educate her on so many topics and even had discussions about economics and politics and they never ran out of things to talk about. They would play chess, sing songs, play table tennis, play pool and also play tennis together. They had endless fun and she felt like their personalities were a perfect fit for each other. In her post, she also did mention that Zhang Gao Li would have chosen divorce if the two had met in Shandong. Just a little note, Shandong is a province in China that has less political significance than in Beijing. But because of where they met and 
where they are situated at and also because of his political standing in the country, it is impossible to divorce. Zhang Gaoli further expressed his love for Peng Shuai by saying that he loves her very very much and hopes that in their next lifetime, they would be able to meet each other again at around the age of 18 or 20 ideally. Peng Shuai thought that she would just accompany him silently without demanding for anything more in this relationship of theirs. In 2017, when Peng Shuai participated in the WTA Taiwan Women's Single Semi-Finals and returned to the French Open that year, she was seen wearing a necklace in the shape of the English letter Z. At that time, a reporter asked Peng Shuai, what is the meaning of that Z necklace you're wearing? Although Peng Shuai did not disclose what the necklace meant at the time, she replied to reporters that the necklace holds a very special meaning to her. According to media analysis, Z happened to be the first letter of Zhang Gaoli's surname, and Peng Shuai's move seems to have long wanted to announce her secret love affair with Zhang Gaoli to the rest of the world. Now, everything was fine in the beginning, but as time went on, things started to change gradually. Peng Shuai felt so much unfairness and humiliation as time went by. She claimed that each time she was invited by Zhang Gaoli to go to his house, she would be met with humiliation, all kinds of jeer and mockery from his wife Kang Jie behind his back. For instance, Peng Shuai would say how Beijing had poor air quality during the winter due to smog and Kang Jie would say, it is because you live in the countryside, we don't feel that at all here, clearly mocking her. I can't confirm or confidently say if the wife is aware of her husband's relationship with Peng Shuai since the very beginning, but from the way she had behaved towards Peng Shuai thus indicates that it may have been possible that she was aware or she might have suspected but there's nothing much she can do about it other than being mean to her behind her husband's back. Peng Shuai also wrote that they had a very bad argument on the 30th of October and Zhang Kaoli had told Peng Shuai that she should go to his house on the 2nd November around noon to slowly talk things out. However, on the 2nd November, Zhang Kaoli called to say that he was unavailable and he was busy. He denied everything and made excuses for himself. And this statement is from Peng Shuai herself. And just like this, you disappeared again, just like seven years ago. And I guess this recent incident pushed Peng Shuai over the edge and hence this Weibo post was being made. She felt like she was being played with and clearly she felt like everything was unfair. She was being dumb and being pursued and being dumb on and off. The relationship was so toxic and detrimental to her mental well-being. Her post did suggest that she had suicidal tendencies but doesn't have the courage to die. Infidelity is strictly prohibited by the Communist Party and results in expulsion from the organization. Putting his career first since he holds such a reputable position and power in China, it's no wonder that he wanted to keep his love affair with Peng Shuai a secret. Peng Shuai said that Zhang Gaoli was always concerned that she might record their encounters and she therefore has no evidence to support her allegations. Despite that, she still wanted to publicly voice what happened to her. As public allegations against high-ranking Chinese government officials are unheard of, and due to Peng Shuai's celebrity status, screenshots of the post had already been saved and shared before it was deleted. It quickly went viral and Peng Shuai's accusation earned media coverage around the globe. How did China react to this whole situation? The post was deleted by China's strict censors in less than 30 minutes, but nonetheless went viral. As people sought to discuss and share the news, censors claimed down blocking keywords like tennis, disabling comments on Peng Shuai's account, and removing numerous references to her from China's internet. There has been no official response. Neither China's government nor Chang Gao Li have responded to media queries or made any public statements. The spokesperson for China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which deals with foreign press, has said it is not a diplomatic issue and he has no knowledge of the incident. Peng Shuai's disclosure is also a part of the Me Too movement in China. As with the rest of the world, the Me Too movement has brought down several high-profile Chinese journalists, academics, and corporate high flyers. But not anyone from China's ruling Communist Party, let alone one as high-ranking as Zhang Gao Li. Will it be different this time round considering Peng Shuai's high celebrity status? I highly doubt so given the overwhelming effort by state censors to kill Peng Shuai's story. How did the Women's Tennis Association respond? The organization released a statement from Steve Simon, the chairman and CEO, asking for a full, fair and transparent investigation into Peng Shuai's allegations. 
Peng Shuai and all women deserve to be heard, not censored, Simon said. Her accusation about the conduct of a former Chinese leader involving a sexual assault must be treated with the utmost seriousness. In all societies, the behaviour she alleges that took place needs to be investigated, not condoned or ignored. Ever since Peng Shuai's Weibo post had been removed, she has not been seen in public or in fact responded to any communication attempts from the WTA. Shortly after the above statement made by Simon was being released, the Chinese Tennis Association and other local sources confirmed that Peng Shuai was safe. Yet, no one from the WTA, including officials and active players, had been able to directly reach Peng Shuai. In an interview with Time, Simon said the organization had tried every method at its disposal to reach her. Voice, digital, tweeting, WeChat, WhatsApp, text. There are plenty of different messaging things we all use and are all able to communicate with, and none of those have produced a result as of this point. China Global Television Network, CGTN, a government-affiliated media organization, posted a tweet with a message reportedly from Peng Shuai, but it only furthered doubt about Peng Shuai's whereabouts and safety. And it doesn't seem to be from Peng Shuai herself. Now, the email was supposedly written by Peng Shuai as a private message to Steve Simon in response to his public statement. Yet, the writer addressed it to everyone instead of Steve Simon. Now, if this was meant to be a public statement, Peng Shuai would have emailed it to media outlets worldwide. If you look at the email again, the writer uses phrases like, I thank you all. I hope to promote Chinese tennis with you all. Yeah, so it's a bit weird to me. It's a bit suspicious. I'm going to zoom in on that one part that has that visible cursor. Now, the presence of the cursor clearly tells us that the email was being written when that screenshot was taken. It won't appear if you are merely reading the email, although there are several possibilities as to why the presence of the cursor might be there. Number one, Peng Shuai herself wrote it and sent it to CGTN, a screenshot of the draft, instead of just sending the email over to CGTN, which is just weird. The presence of the cursor could mean that the email was still being written and it's not the final version. But why would you screenshot a draft version instead? Second, CGTN got duped by someone, most likely trolls, thinking it was Peng Shuai who had written that email without verifying it with her. Third, the email was fabricated by CGTN themselves, pretending to be Peng Shuai because that is the only possible way for CGTN to take a screenshot of an email with an active cursor. Simon and the WTA dismissed the suggestion the email came from Peng Shuai and said it only increased his concern. I could see why. Now, there were other elements which also prompted skepticism. The language of the letter was similar to previous forced confessions by detainees in China. And as what we talk about, the screenshot included a visible cursor in the text and it was not published anywhere inside China or in Chinese. So that's why people and Simon himself find the email very, very suspicious. So what's WTA next step? Simon said that the WTA has not spoken to Peng Shuai despite the claims made by state media about an email being sent to him. They have tried reaching out to her on every phone number and email address and other forms of contact, but to no avail. There is significant pressure on China authorities to provide proof Peng Shuai is safe. WTA Chief Simon said he is willing to lose hundreds of millions of dollars worth of business in China if she is not fully accounted for. And tennis in China is big business, with the WTA commitments alone amounting to about $1 billion. The WTA also has a 10-year deal with China to host the WTA finals in the southern Chinese city of Shenzhen. The controversy could also impact the upcoming 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics, which kick off on February 4th. Not only that, the United Nations Human Rights Office has called for an investigation with full transparency. The White House has also joined the call for the Chinese government to provide independent, verifiable proof of missing tennis star Peng Shuai's whereabouts and her safety, according to Press Secretary Jen Psaki. Tennis stars, including Naomi Osaka, were extremely worried for Peng Shuai's safety and took to social media to highlight the search for Peng Shuai. Serena Williams encouraged people not to stay silent. This must be investigated and we must not stay silent. Sending love to her and her family during this 
incredibly difficult time. There is this Twitter account with the username handle Shen underscore Shi Wei, labeled Chinese state affiliated media by the social network, posted four undated images of Peng Shuai late Friday on 19 November. Shen Shi Wei said the pictures were shared on Peng Shuai's WeChat moments, a function often restricted to friends to wish her followers a good weekend. One photo shows the smiling player with a cat in her arms, with stuffed animals, a trophy, a Chinese flag, and certificates visible in the background. Another image shows a selfie of Peng Shuai with a toy from the children's animation Kung Fu Panda, with an image of Winnie the Pooh in the background. Now, these images has caused quite a bit of frenzy online because the children's character is often censored online in China as critics say Chinese leader Xi Jinping resembles the cartoon. I have taken a few screenshots from Twitter of people talking about the images that was being posted by Shen Shi Wei. As you can see, what are some of the speculations being talked about? According to this Dr. Leta Hong Fincher, China has at times banned images of Winnie the Pooh for looking like Xi Jinping, so this government released images of Peng Shuai are a distress signal. And people are using the hashtag where is Peng Shuai to keep the news running and going and not staying silent, hoping that, you know, it will give China enough pressure to provide more updates and start the investigation going. There is another user who is very concerned over the images. Is it possible that she's trying to give hidden messages that she's in trouble or she's being controlled? We are not very sure on that. Chinese state media also posted two videos on Saturday, November 20th to show tennis star Peng Shuai smiling and well. Now in one of the two videos posted on Twitter by, sorry I don't know how to pronounce his name, by Hu Xijing, the outspoken editor of the Global Times newspaper, the 35-year-old appears to be walking into a restaurant wearing a coat, knit cap and face mask. In the other video clip, Peng Shuai is seen Masler sitting at the table chatting with people over a meal. However, the authenticity of the video could not be confirmed. The conversation revolves around tennis matches and a man sitting with Peng Shuai and two other women said, tomorrow is November 20th. But one of the women quickly interrupted him to say, it is the 21st or Sunday. The chat appears to be somehow staged and it was filmed in the evening hours with a mobile phone. Peng Shuai, however, does seem to be quite relaxed in the footage scene. The following day on Sunday, Peng Shuai appeared at the Beijing tennis tournament, according to official event photos, after international pressure mounted for information about her well-being. Peng Shuai can be seen in a navy sports jacket and white track pants at the Fila Kids Junior Tennis Challenger Finals, according to photos published on the official Weibo account of the China Open. Now, if I'm not wrong, there is a video on YouTube. One of the media went down to the restaurant to check with the waitress whether Peng Shuai was indeed there having dinner with her friends and colleagues and coach. One of the waitress did verify that she saw Peng Shuai there. They even went down to the stadium to ask if Peng Shuai was was indeed at the ceremony and the person said yes and quickly asked them to leave. So it is not just any old videos that they took to just post to the world to let the world see that Peng Shuai is safe. Women's Tennis Association boss Steve Simon said he was glad to see the images and videos but it remains unclear if she is free and able to make decisions and take actions on her own without coercion or external interference. This video alone is insufficient. According to the IOC International Olympic Committee, Peng Shuai held a 30-minute call with Thomas Buck the organization's president and a former Olympic fencer. In a statement posted on the IOC website that accompanied by a photo of the call, the organization said Peng Shuai stated that she is safe and well, living at her home in Beijing, but would like to have her privacy respected at this time. This is why she prefers to spend her time with friends and family right now. Even though the 30 minutes call was not really released, um, only just a picture from the IOC website, a friend of Peng Shuai assisted her with her English according to an Olympic official. But it is known that Peng Shuai became proficient in the language over her 15-year professional tennis career. The call ended with Thomas Buck inviting Peng Shuai for a dinner once he arrives in Beijing next January, which she gladly accepted. However, the seemingly friendly banter and dinner plans did little to satisfy Steve Simon. Simon has been trying to establish independent contact with Peng Shuai for more than a week but to no avail. 
the one thing that's on my mind is I kept wondering why why can't she just do all these updates through her Weibo post because you know Weibo is like the international media platform for you to make announcement especially if you're a celebrity she could probably use her Weibo and you know just post all these pictures but instead she has to go through the Chinese media which all the more made this even more suspicious and even more worrying it does really seem to me like she's being controlled. So I guess with immense pressure from the public, UN, US and even UK calling for a full, fair and transparent investigation, a rally was also staged in New York on Sunday 22nd November in support of Peng Shui by a group of Chinese feminists. Many people still believe that she is not truly free. Notable people who have dropped from sight include business leader Jack Ma and famous actress Fan Bingbing. Jack Ma stopped appearing in public after he criticized regulators as being too conservative in an October 2020 speech. He reappeared again after two months but made no mention of his sudden disappearance. It's not uncommon for some people to be dropped off the map just like that if they are linked to disputes with the politically well-connected business and reputation. We can only hope for Peng Shui to be safe and is not under any control. So we have come to an end for today's story on Peng Shui's allegations. Let me know what are your thoughts, I'm really curious, but this is what I feel basically. I do feel that she's still not safe. If you like the way I present to you the stories, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and you can also leave a comment drop by and say hi and i'll see you next thursday with another story bye